What's up, guys? All right. Just gonna wait for a few viewers to pop in before I start the chaos here. So right now I'm looking at Cardano. I'm actually preparing for a long position. So we got price action breaking above this downturning resistance here on the daily. So the daily time frame, we're breaking this downturning resistance after losing this uptrending support right here. Right about here. So we lost this uptrending support. Here we enter a short. And when we break this downturning resistance, it's preparing us to enter a long and close that short. So from this point here to where we're currently at, um, it's about 7.48% gain. And it was a, like a 20 some day move here. And now we're preparing for the next multi-day trade uh, for a pump here. What's up guys? All right, we got Dean Morris. What's up bro? Um, Loki, how you doing man? You should try to use the ATM for this trade. Yes, because Cardano, I have access to um, using this on the copy trader. So when I enter, it'll enter everyone else into the same trade. But yeah, I definitely want to do that with this one. It'll be a multi-day trade though, which I have not done with the copy trader yet. So pretty exciting. So lower time frames. If I zoom in on the hourly. No, zoom in on the 15 minute, sorry. Uh, what I was preparing for was a close above this neck, like this area where this neckline acted as support. Um, it's currently acting as resistance. So I want to close above this and for it to act as support before entering the long. Um, we could create a double bottom structure though. I was talk, we were doing uh, the trade hunting call this morning and I kind of wanted it to drop first so we can create a uh, more bullish momentum with the double bottom structure. So now we have a little bit more time to enter this. And if we create a double bottom, then we'll have more momentum, more momentum with the pump and be a great start to this trade. We have a strong confirmation bounce here, but if we have like a formation to help dictate that um, support, that'd be even better. Um, this is like the downturning resistance I was talking to you about on the daily time frame. This is the one that confirms a reversal of this downtrend. Here we go, a little bit of a pump. Long time no see, Explode Gaming. Why is that so familiar? Explode, just the word explode. I think you're in Discord for sure. Um, how you doing, man? Try using the ATM, yep. All right, so while I'm waiting for Cardano to do its thing, I'm gonna look at other assets to see if maybe there's another opportunity. Um, I'm gonna just first go through all the assets that I can do on the copy trader. So that way, if anyone who is not able to attend and jump in on their own, I can do it for them. All right, so yeah, Cardano's still doing its thing. So I got, I feel like we got about 45 minutes left on Cardano before we actually have a solid reason to enter our trade. Um, all right, cool. So let's pull up the chart. I'm gonna first look at Matic, zoom in here. Matic is kind of looking like a long as well within the formation. So the these rising wedge structures are bullish while they're active. So you want to focus on long positions while they're active at these support levels. Uh, but overall, they typically do break to the downside. So and the reason why you want to focus on longs on a rising wedge while it's active is because every like time, every candle that passes, you're protecting your stop loss more and more because it's uptrending. So if you're in an uptrending position, your protection to your stop loss becomes more and more protected as time progresses. Uh, but uh, but overall, it, they usually break to the downside from buyer's exhaustion. Um, I was an elite member until I had some life problems. It was pretty active. Yeah, that's why you're familiar. Yeah, you're a member. I'm glad you're able to jump in on the YouTube stuff, man. Make some 
earn some income. You know, hopefully we see you back. I'm sorry about the problems in your life, man. Um, are we waiting for the 15 minute candle to close? Yes, Barry. We are waiting for, well, not jumping on Matic, that the range is too tight, but for um, Cardano, we want to wait for a 15 minute candle close above this newly created neckline here. And we drop down and hit that support really quick. Um, so it's looking good. What's up, Thesis? How you doing, man? Okay, so let's look at Ethereum. Ethereum is still revisiting this horizontal resistance. This is the um, support that we were using throughout this descending triangle pendant formation that was built here. Resistance here, support, 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 support. And now it's we're revisiting it after we're breaking this downturning momentum. If you entered a short off of this, then awesome. But once we broke this downturning momentum, it's a warning to close at least 50%. Um, and a break of this resistance would be the close the full position, honestly, if you didn't close the full thing. Um, so acceptance back above this would be a good long for Ethereum, but we just got to watch out for this uptrending level of support that could still maintain and flip as resistance. Um, nothing to jump on yet for this. Uh, was if you guys want to throw things in the chat for me to look at after I'm done doing an audit, just let me know. Um, the DXY is looking like it's going to lose this. It's lost this momentum. We already confirmed the loss, honestly. It's just barely holding on this um, horizontal support right now. So if it loses this, it's going to continue going down. And when DXY goes down, everything else usually goes up. So um, that's what I'm looking at this for to see how it's reacting to this momentum. So we should be focusing on longs right now based on this development here. Um, especially now that we confirmed it. If go over to Nomadic, what we have for space here, 1.33%. Risking to lose 1.2%. Yeah, one percent. It's not. It's a one to one point three risk reward ratio, so it's not worth it. This would definitely be worth it when we break the support, though, for a short position. The technical targets down here around eighty two, eighty five. Um, what you have to be mindful of, though, is the local resistance along the way. So every single time we had a retest in this area, um, you look and see how strong that retest in terms of support is based on looking at the VPVR, and each of these retests right here and here are really significant. So we have to be watch, we have to watch out for that along the way down if we break the support level here. Um, yeah, let's go over to Cardano again. It's got a bounce. Uh, that last liquidity grab on Cardano's last dump. This here could have been a liquidity grab, yeah. Right here. It probably wouldn't get very much though. A real liquidity grab would have been it would exceed past this little pump right here. But I'm entering along, yeah, if we get above this area here. Um, let's see where we got for other assets that we can take a peek at. Um, let's see. We're gonna go. I'm gonna take a peek at Phantom after. Let's go look at passive AI here. Yeah, Phantom. Avalanche, take a look at Gala as well. The Tron's looking good for a short again. Let's 
Well, this is a higher time frame trend line. So undo that. 15 minute. Yeah, Tron's building a double top structure. We just lost this momentum here. Right after a large pump at the top of this range. So it's still flagging like it should be prepared for a, another drop here. E and J, bat token, E gold. Yeah, let's take a dive into that. Um, let's see, I'm just looking at the chat here, guys. Looking at what price point or more or less will be looking to enter, stop loss, take profit. So if I enter on Cardano, I want to enter hopefully off of a double bottom structure here. Um, I'll be entering when a 15, so that's not based on the price, it's based on the action. So the action what I want to wait for is a 15 minute candle close above this swing high right here before entering. Um, stop loss location will be below the swing low here, which is also um, a confirmation bounce off of a macro resistance flipping as support. So we'll have that level of protection for our stop loss location. and. This is could be a multi-day trade, so I'll be staying in it until we lose momentum. So double top structures and like that could like stop the trade. But ultimately, this uptrending level of support right here is going to dictate when I likely close this trade. But if we end up getting evolving momentum, we start skyrocketing straight up. We end up using this double top um, resistance as support. And we continue going up, then I'll have a new level of momentum to track. Uh, it just depends on how the momentum evolves. But my full close trade momentum is here. We might have a half close trade momentum pump up here soon. But when Cardano picks a direction, it goes hard that direction for a long period of time. So I'm hoping for a 15 day trade here. Um, so yeah, let's dive into other stuff here. Let's put my primary chart. Let's go over to ENJ, USDT, engine coin. Had a crazy wick here on Binance. That's intense. But it's engine, so Slow market cap doesn't take much to do that. So for now, for engine, we want to get acceptance back inside this value area. So we're going to break this downtrend resistance first. All right, so yeah, we got this downtrending momentum. Once this breaks and in confluence with the break, we get acceptance back inside this range and above this resistance here, then it'd be a great time to enter a long position. And then we'll be watching this um, heart line here I got drawn. And this is a range heart line here. So this is uh, to around 40, 75 is when we have to prepare for strong resistance. Um, as well as local support as well along the way. So local support flipping as resistance. I expect consolidation around here and this consolidation is going to create a pattern that will dictate whether we'll continue going up or not. Uh, this is the daily time frame for engine. So if we zoom in on the hourly, we're creating a kind of like a parabolic curve in a way. Let's see. Oh, no, no parabolic curve, just evolving momentum. So we got you know, nothing yet for our engine. We got to get above this, preferably like above this or here. And that'll be a multi-day trade as well for engine. All right, so nothing there. Let's jump into the next request, basic attention token, USDT. We got a break of this downturn resistance. Right here. A 
approaching a neckline resistance as well. It's the hourly time frame. Uh, let me back up a little bit. I just want to see why I have this value area drawn. Okay, that's demand zone. I guess this was an area of demand where typically we had held support. It's not mapped out that well. It's based on this local resistance here. So depending on what I was looking at the time, okay, at the time I was looking at uh, this break of this downturning resistance and this consolidation phase, and I want to see it act as support, act as support, and this was my target at the time. But hit the target, but doesn't look like I entered the trade because normally I'll leave my um, long position tools and stuff like that on if I entered the trade. Um, but it did break macro resistance in the daily from the all-time high. So this could be a great early entry for a trade right here for like a longer term trade. So we got this downtrending resistance. We got this uptrending support and the sending triangle. These typically break to the downside, but um, if we get acceptance back in this range, then we can long prepare uh, for this to act as resistance, but ultimately this downturning resistance right here where we got to prepare to take everything out. But if we get a break above this, then this would be a great early entry for a long-term trade. And there, there's a lot of times where you could enter a scalp trade and it could evolve and turn into a swing trade. So um, this looks like that could be one of those situations. You go in for a short-term target, but once certain things happen, like certain levels of resistance act as support, then you can follow the momentum along the way up. Like for example, here we're entering, looking at a acceptance back into this value area. We have this neckline resistance here that could also continue the momentum once we break that and have it act as support. No, yeah, I'll bring us right to the top of the range. I think I moved this range here. I'm gonna undo that. But yeah, that's a uh, basic attention token. Can update any entry in chat, guys, for the next 15 minutes. I won't be able to hear it. Oh, I'm sorry, man. That's rough. Yeah, nothing yet. Um, e gold was the next request. Let's take a look at e gold. E gold usually has great moves. There's a lot of Bitcoin correlation too, so we can use Bitcoin as an indicator in which direction it can go. Uh, we'll go with Bit Get Spot price action. Bybit probably has more data though. Let's go with Bybit. Um, e gold still below this downturning resistance here. And we got to map out the point of control right about here. All right, cool. All right, so all the significant levels are wrapped out for eGold. Now we can zoom in. So we're on the daily, zooming in on the four hour first. I broke this downtrending resistance. The momentum resulted in an inverse head and shoulders. It's uptrending neckline. Uptrending, um, just so you guys are aware, uptrending necklines with an inverse head and shoulder structure like this um, are less likely to hit their target because they get exhausted. There's a lot more buyer's exhaustion built into them. But it'll bring us right to this local point of control right here.
and with head and shoulders and inverse head and shoulder structures, you can map out the support level here. And this is the invalidation zone. So anything that goes below this, this is typically where you'd want to put a stop loss location for an inverse head and shoulders. And if we get break below, we get a candle close below this invalidation zone, then it means that we're not trading an inverse head and shoulders. We can create a whole other formation. Um, in this example, it could be a head, uh, a double top structure. Uh, going in the hourly. Yeah, so we have to wait for candle close above this for an entry off this formation. Nice eagle, nothing there. Uh, we are knocking the door of Cardano. No candle close above yet. All right, thanks, Matt. Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, knocking the door, like you said, just taking a peek. <laughs> Uh, trying to get above this neckline here. Oh, that's just resistance here. This is the new evolving momentum. Nothing yet. All right, so let's go back. Kava, what's the next request? Kulu, you know, let's take a look. So Kava, let's go back to our eagle chart. We can't jump in on this one. It's gonna be several hours before that happens. Yeah. Okay, so Kava, USDT. I was looking for a short over here. A crazy wick. Um, okay, so we got this uptrending momentum. It's in the last straw right now. So we're building a bullish formation. We did lose this momentum. So chance of it breaking to the downsides increased, but we can watch this formation for an entry. Resistance. Support. All right. All right. So yeah, you know, 111s the target for this pennant, but if we lose the support first, then we're going to be entering off of the loss of momentum and preparing to close at local levels of support and see how it reacts. Okay, nothing yet. This is the hourly time frame, so if you zoom in the 15 minute shows we can't use. Um, so this is the hourly trend line. So we need an hourly candle close above this. If we have trend lines here, we can depend on the 15 minute time frame for this white line here. because so we haven't had a full 15 minute candle close above this for a breakout. But just so you guys are aware, the higher the time frame, the more dependable the breakout is if you're entering off of a breakout candle and not a confirmation bounce. Uh, Cardano broke. Okay. Oh, it broke so hard too. Man. All right. Let's look at this local ceiling first. One percent left of the local resistance. 1% here. So if we entered here to one to one, we still don't have a confirmation yet, but it's pretty close. A 10 X leverage. That's what I'm aiming for, for the challenge. So if it's a one to one with 10 X leverage, I don't want to risk to lose 10% of the 
bag to gain 10%. Well, this is definitely one I would want to enter for a multi-day trade though. Link, what are you doing, bro? Or hit the technical. What else we got? Gava, Gala. Let's go to Gala. Everyone likes Gala. Kava looks great soon, though, too. Local momentum. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, Gala's looking great uh, for long. Very, very soon. What's the long position look like? So we want to get above this point of control because um, we could break out anywhere around here and then get immediately rejected back down. Like that, right? So you got to be cautious of that point of control. So enter to be roughly around here. Take profit roughly around here. Stop loss around here. So one to one point four. Risking to lose one point three one percent. So risking to lose thirteen percent with ten X leverage. Jasmine. Yeah, we can take a look at Jasmine. Cardano. I just want to take a peek at this macro position here. So if, if Gala breaks to the upside, it's a big if though. Um, during this entry, this will be an earlier entry for the um, the macro break to the upside. If we get a, um, we'll probably get a rejection here. Come back down for a retest, and then then we're off for a double bottom reversal. A really strong double bottom reversal here. Um, that could be a killer trade. Technical targets, 36.88. Very, very strong resistance here at 36.22. But uh, that's a huge gain. What is that? 20%. That's a moonshot, but we can take, you know, there's going to be formations along the way up that we can track. And uh, the great part about getting in early around here is we have this uptrending support here that can be maintained as our momentum for a long period of time. So our stop loss become more and more protected as time progresses. Um, how long did it take to drop from this zone to the bottom? Five, six, about six days. Okay. So if we had equivalent consolidation ranges along the way up, it could take about five to six days to get to that target. Yeah, so let's watch this one closely too, because as long as we get above that point of control, we're fine, we're set. I just don't like the chance to risk to lose that much. But every hour that every fifteen minutes that passes will be more and more protected. Let's see how it goes. Oh, I'm gonna set an alarm though for sure. There we go. I gotta get a different webhook. We're not so mess up the alert. 
Uh, let's take a look at Jasmine while we wait for Gala. I think Gala is going to be the trade, though, for the challenge. It's the safest looking trade that we've looked at. Okay. All right. So, Jasmine. Let's take a peek at Jasmine. Well, I'm entering Cardano no matter what, but I don't think I'm going to be doing it as part of the 100 k the 100 to 50k challenge just because it's a multi-day trade um we'll get the funds caught up in a single trade for a long period of time and it'll take longer for us to hit 50k um okay jasmine double bottom after a break of this Downtrend resistance, got a confirmation off of the downtrend resistance to flip as support. I just gotta zoom out a little bit, see what the bigger picture is. We fish hooked here, uh, consolidated. Valley area. Can you use the ADA one on Coffee Trader one then, bro? Um, I might use it on the Max Mayor one. I don't know if I'll use it on the other. I'll, I'll obviously, yeah, I'll see what I can do. I like the. We're getting out of this consolidation here. I'm just looking at the range resistance right now because as a range trader, this is kind of like a, once you get acceptance back into an area of interest like this, you typically would prepare to short. And we're looking at this like we're preparing to long uh, from a double bottom structure. So a confirmation to long would be when we get above this neckline for the 15 minute time frame. We might be able to use a five minute. Yeah, we can use the five minute. So a five minute candle above this neckline can enter along for a double bottom structure for Jasmine. But like I said before, there's a few things that could push the price action down. So we have to get above this neckline first for sure. Um, Cause this could become a descending triangle quite easily and just go down to a support level again here. Cardano, cup and handle, where'd you see that? Maybe a micro one here, I'm not sure. Um, let's take a look at the chat. We got, we checked out engine, bat, e-gold, kava, and Gala was our winner so far. So we should open Gala on a separate chart because it has the safest path towards the target. Two levels where we can consolidate. Okay. Amori and Gala. Nice. <laughs> Alright, cool. So hopefully you got in a good position down here. Um, but uh, basically, if you're in a long already on Gala, what I would look for is uh, just use this as your confluence to prepare to close your trade early or not. If we get a rejection here, then you can close your trade early. But depending on where you entered, you should have a good stop loss location. Cause like I said, every 15 minutes, five minutes or every candle that passes by, 
you can technically adjust your stop loss into a different invalidation zone to protect your capital. Um, what you say about fish hook? Oh, a fish hook is when there's a, coll a strong collapse in price action, we tend to, when you start seeing consolidation, you can prepare for what's called a fish hook pump. And it usually is 40% of the drop. I'll, I'm gonna try to find you an example, but. Oh, we're getting close. Two minutes left. So we'll look back at this in two minutes. Um, what were we looking at before for that uh, fish hook formation? Oh, link. We can take a look at link too. Yeah, this is link. Um, so link, I was waiting for a candle to break above this resistance. I think it might enter actually because this is a confirmation bounce to an inverse head and shoulder structure with a technical target of $7. So it's pretty clean structure. I was waiting for the confirmation formation break, which was this downtrend resistance here. Um, we could have entered off of this downtrend momentum being broken, but I just decided not to because um, at the time there was like some bearish things in the chart for Bitcoin and Link has some a lot of Bitcoin liquidity. So honestly, this is a good Link trade. We just got to be prepared for this local level of um, resistance here. This was once the range support zone for Link inside of its massive formation that's been stuck inside of for over a year. So I would say to be completely safe to wait until we get a candle close above this local resistance here. Because um, in a macro sense, this is that would be the best call to do for a confirmation bounce. You'll be sacrificing some gains, but for extra security. Um, what will be sacrificing to lose, though? As long as it's going to be pretty big. So 1.25%, 12% on a 10x trade. Now, this is like, I know I usually with the challenge, I try to stay on the call until the trade closes. But this, if we did a trade setup like this, it could take some time. So we would draw out the momentum and the plan and stick to the plan like until it's over. Uh, this is no longer relevant, so I can delete that. So this is the uh, momentum here that we'd follow. Nine minutes on that. Gala giving us a delay. Fuck. We'll see what happens. We got four minutes left. Cardano, what are you doing? Cardano's, yeah. Like this is still a good trade, but it's one to one. So if those who are watching, I can't control what you guys do. So um, one to one trades aren't great unless you have a really high win rate. So you want to have a win rate at least above 50% before doing that. And just healthy practice, focusing on one to twos are better. If you want to have consistent growth on your trading account. Uh, Tron, TRX. Yeah, Tron, we were looking at Tron for a short when we get... Oh, yeah, we got a time delay here. Yep, big one. Okay, so we can look away from the chart for a little bit there. Um, so let's go to TRX. Could be close to that. It's still creeping up. It is literally doing its own thing right now. It just keeps. Yeah, 
I definitely want to don't yeah I don't want to we're kind of like in a no trade situation for Tron. We got to break. The momentum has been pretty unreliable today with Tron. I'd want to wait until we break this neckline before entering a short from this double top structure. Matic, Tron, Link. Yeah, we haven't got above that yet for Link. Cardano. Yeah, I might revisit. I'm going to jump in on Cardano if we revisit this uptrending support. If it happens sooner rather than later. TRX ascending wedge. You have this structure right here you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely got an ascending wedge structure here. And they usually break, that's partially why I want to wait for the neckline break, because when they break to the downside, the target is typically the bottom of the formation. So when this, this could be an earlier entry for the double top. Um, if you're looking for something like that. We gotta lose this though. It's almost at its exhaustion point. It's gotta. We basically already hit it. Uh, link, still waiting, still waiting, still waiting. I gotta create a gala chart. I can do it right now. Where's uh my Discord? What's the sound coin hitting the floor? <laughs> uh, what about Veracity? Yeah, we can take a look at VRA um, while we wait for Gala. So VRA, USDT. I usually hold mine on KuCoin, but the liquidity is, got these terrible wicks here, right? Kind of an exciting project though. They're trying to partner with YouTube, a lot of other social media platforms to issue rewards to those who, um, who are creators and viewers. But um, it's a tough one to trade on lower time frames. You got to trade like a long-term hold like around here you'd enter along and you'd hold it for a long period of time um, short-term trades with all these wicks that you see it's hard to take action on something when you have no real way to validate a trade safely right but yeah long term it's looking great It's, momentum is easy to follow too. It's kind of like Cardano in the sense where you pick a direction and you only can do like shorts throughout this entire time here or stay in the short until we break the momentum and then you stay in the long, you close the long when we close here and then stay in the short, start short and stay in the short until it closes around here and then just so on and so forth. So now it's actually preparing to start another long trend and you stay in it like this is the daily time frame trend line i'll draw here you stay in it until the daily candle closes below the momentum very very simple trading strategy but 
we're basically validating the VRA move very soon. Uh, what do we got left on the daily? Six hours and 32 minutes. Inverse head and shoulder structure. You can see it even on the daily. So if you're trying to validate a reasoning to enter this other than from momentum, you got this inverse head and shoulders right here for VRA. And this is a six hour time frame. We can use six hour. We can use the four hour. You can use the hourly. All right, cool. So you can use the hourly confirmation off of this because we have not yet, I drew this on the six hour time frame, but because we have not yet had an hourly full body candle close above this, you can use it to validate a breakout trade. Um, Yeah, so we're getting close to that. Yeah, lots of reasons to enter along for VRA. Um, well, we're not going long yet on Gala, Dean. We're, we're looking at doing a long, but um, we got a little time delay from a rejection. Uh, Tron could go down, yes even with Bitcoin and uh, ADA going up. As Tron's kind of exhausted. If you go, like, a lot of assets have their own relative strength. A lot of people forget that. But the, um, let me go over to Tron, show you why it's likely, if we get a correction, it's likely to go down while everything else goes up. So here, we've pumped... And this is the, di the the hourly time frame for Tron. Uh, we've pumped from the bottom of this range to the top of the range for the past 21 hours or so. And we're getting uh, close to rejection here. In the macro sense, like Tron's looking bullish, but short term it's looking bearish. Like a lot of range traders would pair short here, but we are waiting for the validation from the head, the double top. When we get a double top structure, then we can prepare to short to the bottom of the range while preparing for our local levels of support to act against us. Um, yeah, this is an area where we previously consolidated in the past. But this is the macro range that we got to get above here. And that's why we wait for certain actions to happen before we enter because we got to validate our entry and we have not yet validated it yet. And the validation for this one will be the loss of this uptrending support from this rising wedge. It'll be a short term trade though, it's down to like seven cents, which is only a 0.4% move or a 4% move with 10x leverage. Uh, Link is still chilling. Yeah, I want to enter that one too. Cardano test the trend line. Yeah, it tested the point control. Um, just chilling. All right, so while we wait for us to be able to take action, because we don't have a confirmation yet, is there anything else you guys want to take a look into? Um, Bitcoin just done a massive sweep of the 11 May high sell-off. Oh, look at you go, come on. Um, so let's take a look at Bitcoin. Okay. Yeah, we're at the support right now. So this is when I'll be bear, like bullish on Bitcoin again if we get back above this uh, local level of support. 
or here and it's flipping it's flipped as resistance here and it's flipping as resistance here um, it could create bearish divergence yeah we can easily create bearish divergence depending on how this candle closes we need to create a new lower we need to get below this green candle here for us to get validated for diversions here uh, but if we get a candle close yeah here then we got bearish divergence and for those who don't know what bearish divergence is when you see an uptrend in the price action but a downtrend in the rsi you have bearish divergence and it's just an extra level of confluence with your short position trades or to close your long position trades and divergences are amazing when you're range trading getting at that local level of support getting both divergence double bottom usually or inverse head and shoulders they usually tend to play off uh bullish divergence as well and, and off the races and nothing yet but uh for me to enter a short i need to break this neckline here I'll go to the 15 minute time frame. Yeah, we have not yet. Cardano, nope. Link almost. Let's pull this onto Gala. Oh man. What's the max time delay? Two hours. And if we pop straight up. Above this neckline, we can revalidate this double bottom structure. We have to get above at least this micro double bottom neckline here. Let's go through the chat. Uh, INJ and render, please. Yeah, let's take a look at INJ while we wait. And render, too, actually. I haven't looked at render in a little while. Okay, render, I mean, INJ, yeah, should have entered along here. Yeah, we just broke this downturning resistance here. Got above this local point of control and Nothing yet. It's trapped in a small point of interest. But... Yeah, we haven't hit that target. I don't think we're going to hit this target. Yeah, INJ's got really strong upturning momentum right here. That's keeping it up. We might revisit this, but I don't think we're going to hit this target because this was in the way. I think we went over that the last time we looked. Um, but yeah, it just broke this downturning momentum that's been holding it down since May 23rd. And the opportunity to enter is kind of passed, but you could technically enter late. You're adding a lot more risk by entering that much that much later. Maybe at the bottom of this channel. If we revisit the bottom of this channel, enter in late. 
Um, what was the other one? Render. Yeah, render. Hopefully we get an opportunity for render. Okay, so render we got consistent uptrending range here. Early, zooming in, double bottom. Turning into an ascending triangle. Break of this down, turning momentum. And Longed here. That's a decent trade setup too for render. The current formation that we're building is showing that uh, there's less confidence right now, though. Ascending triangles don't usually break to the upside, but they're very easy to watch in the order books. If you see in the order books a giant sell wall here, then you know that it's going to be honored as resistance again. Um, if the sell wall is gone, it's been eaten up because we've hit it so many times, then the chance of it breaking to the upside is like dramatically higher. And uh, the, another great thing about ascending triangles is that uh, when you break to the upside, your stop loss becomes more and more protected from the uptrending momentum. But this, yeah, for this opportunity to happen, we got to wait a little bit longer. Just to confirm that we are going to continue going to the upside, we got to break this horizontal resistance first. Um, but a great trade opportunity, one to two risk reward ratio, and if we get above this point of control during the breakout, this local point of control, then we have that extra level of uh, uh, protection against our stop losses too as well. Um, I don't think I missed anything in the chat. I think we've gone through every asset you guys want me to look at. What about adjusting copy trader to 10x? So the copy trader, I've already adjusted to allow 10x. So now going forward, when I enter a trade, you can have it set up so that it'll enter on 10x. I'll be treating each trade as if it is 10x, even for those who are, because I don't know how many people, I, I can't see the levers you guys choose, so. I'll be trading in as if everything is 10x. So I'll be monitoring my risk that way. Um, sweep of that A. It's a good sweep. A sweep behavior like this typically means we'll break to the downside. So DXY doing still going down. Create a lower low. So it's still showing us here at the DXY that things are likely to continue going up. It's just happening so slowly. There's not going to be very much volume this week, unfortunately, guys, because um, there's a lot going on in terms of developments for the USD and Canadian market as well. Canada's got CPI coming out tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday, we got unemployment change for Australia. Unemployment for Thursday. And you know, Powell's has a meeting on Friday. So like this whole week is packed with craziness. That's gonna impact the volatility of the market. So we might be stuck ranging a little bit. Most of the formations that we're looking at are kind of like range formations anyway. So other than Link, Link is looking like it's about to pump, but Link overall in general just 
is in a range. It's been stuck in the same range for year over a year. Um, so this is Link's daily chart from the start of this formation to where we're currently at. It is 372 days. And now we're trying to get acceptance back into this like heartline range here. And if we get back in there, get acceptance back into there, then we can get to the top of it again relatively easily. And that's a decent move. Like this uh, formation that we're trading off of, it's under the hopes that we get acceptance back into this area. So we'll be reacting to that local resistance immediately if we lose momentum. Yes, we have a pair for any low low time frame double tops near this white line here to tell us to get out. But right now it's yeah. Might get a confirmation bounce off this resistance and have enough momentum to break past this. We're sitting on our hands today. Where are we at? We're at an hour so far. We haven't even gotten a trade in. That's rough. Um, Ethereum down. Bitcoin's. Losing this momentum. Do we have any bearish trades set up? In case these don't play out. We have Maddox. I mean, Maddox is bearish, but it's got a few ways to go before meeting that support. Um, any other assets you guys want to take a peek at? Um, because right now, all the setups we have are showing a for bullish moves we need to find a bearish setup so it can correlate with our bitcoin's price action a bearish set for link would be when we break this neckline will be a double top but that's f several hours away YGG. What on earth is that? Let's take a look. Um, YG. Security token. Okay, so. Um, yeah, for the one that, I sorry, I can't pronounce your name, YGG, do you know that if this has a burning or minting schedule? I guess we can take a look at that on our own. We got a pennant forming at an area of interest. Oh, this is a local area of interest. It's like here. Let's go to daily. Oh, it's a pretty significant zone. Yeah, YGG is retesting this neckline right here in this demand zone. So that's daily resistance and support. Let's zoom in now. Uh, we also have this evolving momentum here. Zoom in on the hourly now. Yeah, this um, structure here is pretty young. So we don't have like a, we have horizontal resistance that we could follow, but you don't really have a structure here to trade off of. But it does look like it's 
building a continuation pattern inside this area of interest. So once that f formation's fully constructed, then we can have a great continuation for YGG. You just gotta be aware of this downtrend resistance here, which is pretty immediate. Um, if we break past that, we could have a continuation all the way up here at 26 cents. It's a pretty massive move, honestly, but it looks like a very low, low liquidity asset. So moves like that are pretty simple. It doesn't take very much money. Um, but I have nothing I would act off of personally. Uh, Cardano is very close to the momentum. All right, cool. Let's take a peek at Cardano. Oh, it is. Thank you. Man, having you guys with me makes trading easier. <laughs> so I get notified of all the moves. That's oh, a gaming token. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so Bitcoin on Cardano. Bitcoin's about to lose this momentum. It's got 11 minutes left to confirm. Okay, 10 minutes left on Cardano. Uh, Adam and AVAX. Let's take a look at A AVAX first. Evax is looking pretty good. The support hasn't yet been validated yet, so don't worry about that. But. It's kind of has to pump from here. This isn't a yet valid rising wedge, so I wouldn't worry about it being bearish yet. Um, what we got, yeah, strong retest off this neckline. It is double topping here, which is my only concern. So if we get acceptance back inside this range, then the formation will be adjusted and, uh, it would look like something like the formation would be an uptrending channel like this instead of this double bottom structure. If we uh, break this neckline, that's how to validate it. Um, but nothing yet for a move here. But this one's pretty close. Uh, let's go back to Gala for a second and see what's going on over there. Yeah, it'll be a short if we break that uptrending momentum. I'm preparing for a long here. Uh, 
let's see. Let's take a look at Adam. We haven't checked out Adam yet. One second, let's see if I have an Adam chart already. So I can separate it. Oh, I don't. Yeah, my Discord's not up, so I can't pull it. I'll just pull it from here. I was looking at the macro. So Adam's looking bearish. We're still maintaining this support level. I'm trapped in a value area right now. Three percent range, though. Yeah. It's got an inverse head and shoulder structure, but if I were to enter along, personally, I'd wait until we break above this here. We got a lot of, we broke this downturn momentum, which is great. If we break this to the upside, then uh, we got to be aware of this uptrending level of support flipping as resistance. Um, I'm new to the community. Can I see your trading view in any way or should I draw them myself? You can see all my charts on, uh, um, I should probably just pull up the Discord issue for you. I got chaos desktop, so ignore all this, guys. It's just, I do a lot of editing and stuff. All right, just waiting for the Discord to open. Kind of ran out of space on my computer, so I've been everything's been kind of slow. So I'm trying. I gotta like once we're done this, I gotta clear up a ton of space so I can actually work again, move it all into my Google Drive. Um, Gala is tempting to to long this support. I want to confirm the support being honored though with this trend line break. Like similar to here, like if you were to break this momentum at the support level, then you have a lot of reasons to enter. But we don't have proof that this is being honored yet. That desktop looks like my kids room. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Oh, but this could turn to a short. So I think Gala's going to be a great one to look at for today. It's just the downside is how long it's taking for us to get that confirmation. Um, I'm going to hedge trade this, but I don't, I don't really like enjoy hedge trading. Hedge trading is when you're entering a long and short at the same time, but this in this scenario it actually is not gonna play out for that. Need to break this resistance. Yeah, in the Discord server there's a spot called Investor Charts. So when you click on that you'll see all the assets that I've charted and you can basically track when I draw on my screen you can see it real time happening on your screen. Yeah. But this chart, you can actually, those who are watching, you can actually see it up here. 
and just get life through there too. An hour and 15 minutes in, no trade. Um, we can't touch Adam for a long time, so let's leave that. I'll save the chart. Matic, a few hours there. We already looked at this about an hour and 45 minutes now. Link, time delay. Cardano is tempting for a long. Bitcoin doing pumping up. Okay. I might enter. Yeah, I'm going to enter along on Cardano here. Let's revisit the support. So long as it stays above this point of control. If we get a close above this point of control, I'm entering along. And I'll put my stop loss below this swing low here. Because if we break that swing low, it can turn to a double top. All right, I'm gonna get my coffee trader ready. Now this is technically an entry for a potential multi-day trade. So like the ceiling is up here for the range that we're in, where this white line is. Um, and from here, if we enter from here in about nine seconds, It's a one percent over one percent, so should get a ten x leverage, ten percent move from this. All right, Wick support. Zoom in. Yeah, yeah, I'm entering along. We're Cardano. All right, I'm in. I'm in fourth challenge trade. Um, text. I've got to change that so I can see it when we're even. Okay, one to two. R and R. Put it below this swing low right here, and it's also below this uptrend level support. Now this is a higher time frame support level, so we can have low time frame candles dip below it like we did right here. Um, but we still have that uh, low time frame support bounce here. I don't like the wick, but the every 15 minutes that passes, we'll have a better and better protection for our stop loss location. All right. So now we just got to manage the trade, and we're good. Let's keep that 100% win rate for the challenge. So with this one, I put in um, $100 even for the challenge. Um, I'm also putting my own personal funds in this so I can, it's worth my time too. <laughs> so, um, okay, let's get up. Putting my own personal funds in now. Futures.
Uh, I'm just going to open the chat here. My chat's been down. Any news on the impulse update? So the impulse update is ready to go and ready. Um, it's just um, it's just a few things I got to get. It, it, like auto is waiting on me. Honestly, I'm just getting a few things ready first. I want to validate a few things first to make sure that it's good to have for a long term strategy. Um, there is one month um, throughout the entire back test that was terrible. It was. We they didn't lose money, but um, it was like throughout the entire month it was like a zero point three percent gain, something like that. Am I in gala too? Um, no, gala. We are waiting for a break of this downturn resistance and confluence with the support bounce here, um, and to be above this point of control. So it's a waiting game for gala. I'd really want to be in this gala trade, but I'm probably just going to do this outside the challenge and do it for my own personal funds. But I'm just going to wait. I gotta make sure we tick all the rules first before we enter on that one. Um, we're on Cardano. Don't draw the resistances off of. Oh, see, I I draw resistances just so I can be prepared for them to act as support, and uh, I want to be reactional to them too. Uh, but we know that. Eventually, no matter what, we'll be past this resistance in 45 minutes. Either we lose to it or we'll win to it in 45 minutes, no matter what. It's just being squeezed from this momentum. Um, Kyle, did you go in on the copy trader? I don't see it. I did go in on the copy trader, yes. Where can I find more info about the Max Mayer copy trader? Um, it, it's the same thing as the Kyle copy trader, except he only does the Cardano trades. Um, let me pull up the Discord on my other monitor. It's not opening for some reason. It went through on mine, yet. Yeah. Cardano, do what you're told and break the resistance, please. Um, let me just pull up the Discord here. Yeah, it's gone through for everybody that has their thing set up properly, at least. Long position for Cardano. Okay, so let's see what we got in the chat. What was your entry? I'll enter it manually. Um, yeah, thirty-seven, twelve is my entry. We are pretty close to the entry. It's only like a micro cent. We're 0.7% away from the entry right now and now less than yeah. Hey, which platform do you copy trade with? Um, so um, It's 
our own coded system. We coded a system called Passive AI, and uh, basically, it will trade copy trade whenever I enter a trade onto KuCoin, BitGet, and Bybit. So, but we're going to be discontinuing Bybit unfortunately because of uh, regulation issues. But uh, yeah, BitGet and uh, KuCoin, it will trade off of. But when you become a member of Investor Share, you get automatic access to it. We don't take profits or anything like that. All the profits are yours. And I, I used to do it on BitGet directly, but um, the copy trader fees were so high that um, even when I was up like 5% on a trade and I closed it, some of the users were down um, because of the fees. So I was like, this is like it felt impossible to manage the trades properly. So we just coded our own system. Um, On top of that, too, there was a lot of like scam bots out there that I just couldn't really tolerate. So I just ended up creating a system that was kind of a safe haven to people. There's a lot of great ones out there, though. Uh, Pass BI. Uh, one that I really enjoy is Cornix, but Cornix doesn't have a copy trader system. It's just you kind of like merge your own strategy with it. I'm going to check your plans. Cool. Um, stop loss for Cardano. Uh, the stop loss location is below this swing low right here and below this uptrend level support and at the average true range at 36.94. Um, because we're pretty much at the average true range, we can actually use it to manage our stop loss location until we um, have more distance from our entry. And uh, for those of you who may not know, um, in passive AI, there's a stop loss management system too. So if you're like, you can't manage it, the trade, but unfortunately right now it only works for Bitcoin, but we'll have it working for my next priority is Cardano because Cardano is so linear with its direction, right? It always goes one direction strong. Um, so having an average true range on the hourly time frame for Cardano would be intense. And we're about to get that shift in momentum right here. I think it's going to be a pretty awesome opportunity. We're getting in early on this downturn of the resistance break on the daily time frame. We'll see which, see how long it lasts, but they typically last between 15 and 30 days. Just going one direction. So, yeah. Hourly, double click. There we go. Just chilling. Um, take profit for this trade. Are we watching momentum? Yeah, so I'm going to be watching this momentum here for the take profit. The, the initial goal is a 1% gain and is prior to this ceiling here of this formation, right? This uptrending resistance. So yeah, that's my target short term, but I'm going to be leaving. I'm going to have a separate long term position trade open because of what I just showed you in the daily time frame. We could just keep going up and up and up once we break this um, resistance this short-term trade could convert into a longer-term trade like I've entered a trade with Bitcoin thinking that it would last a few days and it lasts me over a year so I would love to have a situation like that happen for you guys like if we entered into like a long like a short-term trade trying to get in for the 1% gain but the momentum keeps going up and up and we break this resistance before we lose momentum um, then we could yeah, we just need yeah, we just need this to be lost first before we lose this. And then we can enter well, this entry here could be a, a trade that can last about fifteen days. Um But I'm in on yeah, 10x leverage, 
hundred dollars for the challenge here. Uh, where I'm at in the challenge right now. No, that's the wrong chart. There we go. Um, so yeah, we've done three trades. The XRP trade, Cardano was 7.5%. Tron was 1.36%. This was kind of winning in our direction and then it went against us. So we had the force to close it early. Um, but yeah, we're only up 12% so far, but so it takes sometimes you have you don't get to choose when to take profits the market does so we have to dictate or take profits from that um but yeah like this for example this momentum is going to dictate when we close a portion of our trade Take profit, take profits reactional, man. But the ultimate ceiling for our, like if you want out, you don't want to manage it, 37.49, roughly. But it's either that or this, whatever happens first. If we lose this momentum or if we hit that first. Okay, so we just need to break the yeah, five minute candle above this. There we go. 33 seconds. Breaking wick momentum soon. Uh, but like you said, yeah, don't draw on a chart or act as resistance. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think I've caught up to all the questions so far. Just, I'm just I'm just scrolling through the questions right now and see if I missed anything. I think we're good. I think I caught up to everything. That's a good candle close. Hopefully it doesn't lead to a tweezer top. Welcome to the day of the life of the trader. This is as exciting as it gets. If I didn't have any responsibilities, I would have like a TV screen in here and just watch The Office or something <laughs> while we're waiting for it to go towards our target. Get paid to watch The Office. Um, how did you draw that top line of resistance on Cardano? Uh, this one here? And that? Sorry, man. Uh, if you're talking about this one, I used... Um, it's called a horizontal array, and you basically connect it to local support or resistance that you're concerned about. And then, yep, that's how you draw it. No problem. Um, but if you're wondering why it has like the words no, the white line. Okay, the white line here. If I go to higher time frame, I'm just watching it from this level of resistance here. Cut through the tweezer. Well, it's not a tweezer, but um, yeah. I'm just keep. I'm just being cautious of the uptrending resistance. Oh, we're going against us now. Still above the point of control. The local point of control. Yeah, there we go. Strong bounce. Stay that way. What's Bitcoin doing? Oh, it's losing its uptrending momentum. 
DXY. Barely inched up a little bit. So slow. But it's lost its momentum, so things should still remain bullish longer term until it recaptures it. Just realign the trend line a little bit to be a little more accurate. Okay, I finally found how to change my nickname on YouTube what a pain yeah <laughs> yeah there's it's a long process yeah it's pretty annoying let's do it through your Google account I kind of it's kind of annoying when uh, platforms synchronize their system to like Google like, I understand it especially when you're using like a system like they use AdSense for their advertisement system for allowing them to pay their creators and stuff like that. So they kind of have to connect Google, but. Could always have their own uh, centralized system too. But it saves developers a lot of work. Still dancing, man. Yeah, we just need to get above this area and then we'll see fast price action. Let's speed up this trade a little bit. Uh, while we're waiting on this, uh, do you guys want to learn something? Is there anything that you guys want to go over? It doesn't have to be about just uh, the trade itself. We can go over um, anything about trading that you could be struggling with. No question's a dumb question. Everyone started from somewhere. Still waiting. Uh, double top revisit confluence, that's not fun. How to get Elon to ask him to pump Cardano? <laughs> well, there's not enough meme coins in the Cardano network. If there was more meme coins, then maybe we can get Elon to pump it for us. But 
he's always uh, talking about assets that don't help the crypto space, like Dogecoin and stuff like that. Um, Kyle, while we're waiting, could you please explain the concept of order blocks? Yeah, sure. One sec here. So I got uh, order blocks here on my chart somewhere. I got on my other chart. No, it's on this one here. Okay. So you know, right here, I've got the Sonar Labs order block set up here. Um, it's a pretty reliable indicator. You um, typically look at them as, as confluence for areas of reversals. Um, so right, for example, if you see an order block pan out on your on your chart and you're at close to like local levels of resistance and when we escape the order block that's when you'd enter like a short position in this example here um here we had an order block and uh when we came down to revisit it in confluence with this upturning level support when we had candles close outside of it again then you would enter a long position like that in my opinion is the the best way to enact off of an order block you can use them in confluence with other strategies as well. And the, the great thing about order blocks is you can use them in all time frames. But again, like when it comes to trading, the higher the time frame, the more reliable it is. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's see. But yeah, they're, they're more, what I like about order blocks in my opinion, the most is that they kind of like they're a future indicator right they help allow you to adapt to um they allow you to be reactive to your trades so if you're already in existing trade like for example we're trying to get into a long for a gala when we break this downtrend level resistance we can prepare for this order block to cause resistance um but you don't typically want to enact off of it immediately you don't expect for this level right here to act as immediate resistance you expect for us to get acceptance back into it, and then when we get acceptance out of it, that's when you start reacting bearishly. Um, so I would get out of my long position if we lost this level of support and came back out of it. Um, same here, it's inversely correlated. So if we broke to the downside here, instead of breaking to the upside, we could uh, prepare for a reversal here. So we start seeing any double bottom formations and we get out, then you would close your, your short early. But these also help with telling you, like the, the VR, the visible range volume profile will help you more, but these will help you also with um, uh, telling you when there's going to be a reversal for a confirmation rejection. So if you have a candle close out here, um, you could wait for the confirmation if you're a confirmation trader. And you can get the kind of uh, price behavior. You can anticipate, anticipate the price behavior because of the order blocks. I hope that helps. Um, it's just a, yeah, just another tool in the toolkit. But eventually, you start being able to see them. Let me just pull up the. Ch Any other questions you guys got? Well, they're great for value area trading too and um, range trading. Cardano, it's going. Oh, it's lost its momentum. That's the five minute chart. We haven't had a 15 minute confirmation yet, but we're. close yeah 
Didn't like the double top confluence here though. That's what's making me nervous with this trade. The technical target would bring us almost down to our hit. Now, if you're entering this for a macro trade, you wouldn't have your stop loss here. You'd have your stop loss around here. That's the confirmation bounce. Well, I got a warning on my screen. Got a... Yeah, I really got to manage the space on my computer. Bitcoin up to yeah, let's revisit that support flip test resistance here just got to break through it let's go looking like Shazam, yeah, that'll do it. Uh, you mentioned that this may be a multi-day trade for those with small accounts who went all in on this trade. Gosh. Uh, okay. Um, I guess they won't be able to trading on tomorrow's call. Um, so, yeah, the multi-day trade You'd want to have your stop loss way down here, 36.79. Um, if you want to hold this longer term, 36.79, you'd be risking to lose based on the entry, 0.84%. Um, however, if you're doing a multi, well, you can't. You said you went in all in on the trade. Um, you could DCA off of a, a support bounce and the confluence of a resistance break around this area to lower your average. Um, if you went all in, you can't, you don't have that option. So risking to lose 0.84% around here is great for the multi-day trade. The, um, like zooming in on the daily time frame. this is why it's multi-day. Um, let's wait for that to adapt, there we go. Okay, so with Cardano, you know, these, with the, the way its momentum works, it tends to go one direction really strong. So this, this pump, for example, you would be in on the trade from this confirmation bounce. You get out when it breaks to the downside. It's a 20 day trade for 21%. Um, this break here, this little formation here, when we broke that to the downside, we kept going down, down, down. Um, so you had tons of opportunities to enter shorts until this broke um, so if you enter it around here you would get out when the downtrend resistance broke for 15 percent gain you would enter along immediately and you get out when this resist the support broke right about here for 21 percent gain and when you got out you would enter a short right here at the same spot and now we're at the point where we're preparing to close that short and enter the long, right? For the, the daily time frames, at least, um, for seven percent gain. So we're we're going. Where our goal right now is to enter in confluence with this local support bouncing. I gotta adjust that trend line a little bit. And. Uh, yeah, you know, breaking this down training level resistance at the same time. So we have a lot of confluence saying that this is bullish. We're going to go to the upside. Um, and we're using a lower time frame for the entry. So multi-day wise, if we break this resistance at least, we can go in it we could be in a long position for about 15 days on average based on the average of cardano's moves it's 
Should we plan for that by entering a smaller position? Like, um, for, so the way you should manage your trades, if you're doing a multi-day trade, you should have a separate account just for that trade. Um, so that way you, when you do scalping, you don't interfere with that, that balance, that account for managing that account's risk. Um, so if you need a sub account or a whole, create a whole separate account altogether, um, for long-term accounts, then yeah. I would recommend doing it honestly. And then having a, a smaller balanced account for short-term trades. And your goal of your small balance account is to grow the long balance account for your long-term position trades. And then your long position trades, you take those profits. Like this is at least what I do. I take the profits from my long-term trades and then I filter it into a limit buy order for Bitcoin for long-term holds or for assets that provide dividends in the stock market. Um, and my goal with the stock market is to get to 3.5 million. I've already hit my goal for crypto, but yeah, my goal for the stock market is to hit 3.5 million so I can earn enough off of the dividends to basically earn as much as I do for my active income passively. Is shorting 1x safe? Uh, shorting 1x is just as safe as longing 1x. Um, I, I actually, honestly, I do it all the time. Shorting 1x, yeah. Shorting 1x is definitely safe. The, um, the only thing that makes it unsafe is that with crypto, you, you at least can, you know the floor. You can know the floor very easily, but knowing the ceiling is a lot more difficult. So when it starts going against you, knowing the ceiling is a lot harder. In a macro sense, like ultra macro sense, I'm talking because when usually when you use lower levers like that, you're doing a larger time frame trade. Technically, here is a good short scalp. I'm drinking short on this. In a sense that no matter how much you it goes up, your asset is safe. You can just you should never dollar cost average into a short. Um, in a macro sense, unless you're at like local resistance. So like, um, I've had. I had a friend that dollar cost averaged into Bitcoin when it was at $10,000 roughly into a short and then the bull market started. So I just don't want you to get into a situation like that where you enter in a short when an asset is about to go up 600% and you try dollar cost averaging into it, it can lead to like insane. So you should always have your like stop loss in place, your long-term plan in place too. What leverage did you enter with this trade with? I entered with 10x for this trade to go along with the um, the 50k challenge. So I'm, I'm trying to get to $50,000 with a $100 account. Uh, so far we've done three trades and we're up. We have three wins. And first trade was 3.28%. Second trade was 7.54%. Next one was 1.56%. Um, I've entered in with $101. The goal is to get it done in 41 trades, but this first level we've been forced to X our trades early so we haven't gotten to our goal for the first level yet. I'm hoping after this trade we'll be at level 2. I'll have to gain about 8%. How long do you think it will take to complete the challenge? Six months. Unless we get a really good trade. It's six months only because I'm doing it uh, once or twice a week with you guys on YouTube Live. It would be much faster than that if we were able to do it daily.
probably get it done a month and a half if we did it daily. The market conditions are kind of weird right now today with the with all the news that's coming out for this week. Matic's looking good for a short soon. Gala's still doing its thing, taking its time. Link still haven't gotten above that level yet. Yeah, I'm just hoping that Bitcoin doesn't double top here. If we broke this neckline, then right here, it would invalidate our trade. Short term, at least. Then we have to wait for the next opportunity in the daily time frame. Is your Discord portfolio up to date with your current stocks? Uh, not with my stocks, no. With my crypto, yeah. But I, I tend to hold like the, the type of stocks that are constantly in an uptrend in the macro sense, kind of like Bitcoin, and um, are always increasing the amount that they pay through their dividends. And there's about 40, about 40 to 50 different stocks that do that. Um, but they're usually index funds. And the, the great thing about them, like I managed mine through my tax-free savings account, so all the earnings that I receive are tax-free from the dividends. In the US, it's called a Roth IRA, I believe. Well, their, their Roth IRAs are equivalent to our um, RSP, yeah, RSPs. And we can get back above this momentum line. That'd be great. We got five minutes left. Can you repeat if ST is set to 0.36? Oh, you're talking stop loss, sorry, SL. Um, as 0 0.3681 is what the, um, the macro resistance would be, um, stop loss would be. Um, I might switch to macro because our stop loss here at uh, 9.4 could be wicked, like hit really hard with the wick. We could move it around here. Our risk ratio will be 1.68. I'm going to leave it here, honestly. At the 9.4. I'll let you know if I actually adjust my stop loss. On the on the exchange, it's 9.3. 9.4, sorry. Um, we're just in an area of indecision right now, just chilling. 49 people just chilling, watching someone else trade for the past two hours. And if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Kill some time while we wait for this to uh, start pumping. Lower time frames. Yeah, we don't want to get below this neckline. But we're below the point of control, so that's one area of protection that we lost. It's this local POC here. Fa favorite shim song? Um, I'd say all the same. Uh, yeah, all the same. 
if you guys aren't aware, like Shim Moore is part of Investor Share. He's like a international award winning artist for singing and music stuff like that. He's a part of a band called uh, Sick Puppies. But I think all the same would be my favorite. It's fun to play on guitar. It's actually one of the reasons why I learned how to play guitar when I was a kid. Just to learn that one song. <laughs> Thinking about calling Jerome to print 50,500 billion. Yeah. Just give a phone call. If he prints that, this will skyrocket. The value of the US dollar would plummet even further. Pop that hit up. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Let's move that aside. Gala, bro. I like that we got some distance away from the POC, though. So if we got a low volume exit up here, we could enter into that and just prepare for the POC for resistance. Uh, what about late entries in Cardano? Well, if you're entering late, you're getting in a better position than us. So what I would prefer, if you're just following the, not just not to just enter, right? We want to break the downtrending resistance before entering, if you're entering late. And depending on where that happens, I could add to a losing position. But we, we want to break this downtrending level of resistance right here before you enter any longs if you're late. And comp like it would be much better if it was in confluence with a support bounce around here. Like some kind of double bottom structure, break, honoring the support, and then going up from there. Well that yeah that support level is pretty strong. So it should be if it happens to pump straight up from here, I would still even wait. Even if it means getting a, a worse entry than us, just so you can just you know validate that the pump's gonna continue by creating a higher high. Um Took a lot of notes for this next days. Oh, nice. What's up, guys? More viewers jumping in. Can't ruin our 100% win rate. So, Cardano doesn't really have a choice but to break this resistance, right? To maintain that win rate. Uh, da -da. I think I got all the questions in the chat, so if you guys have any other questions, you can shoot them at me. I 
If any of you guys are jumping into decentralized finance yet, we're getting close to that time. Um, so if latecomers should wait until breaking resistance for us, all of us in, if we hit break even, should we get out until that happens too? Uh, no, uh, you're, you're going to be adding fees to your trade. Um, so if we, let's say, had price action come down here and then we broke this and this is our average, we could add an equal amount of funds to the trade from here, right? When when we do that, it will adjust our average from, let's say, let me just pull out. Um, let's say you put in like, a, put a trend line here, $100 here. And we broke this downtrend resistance. We came up, first candle closed here. So you put $100 there. Um, so you have $200 left in total in your trade, but now your new average would actually be right about here. Um, so like during those kinds of scenarios, you can add to an existing position that if it's losing, if you have some bullish confluence to get you into a break even state faster. Um, but yeah, you just want to make sure that you, um, getting in for an additional reason. You don't want to just jump into dollar cost average. You can dollar cost average on certain, there's a whole strategy called the Martingale strategy that you can do that it's all about dollar cost averaging. And, but you have to be very mathematical and analytical with what percentage of loss you should be at before entering. So with like Bitcoin, for example, um, based on the entire history of Bitcoin, if you entered in of equal funds, uh, not equal, uh, if you entered in like a 1% of your account balance into a losing position, every 2.75% drop, you would have a 100% win rate throughout the entire history of Bitcoin. If you just entered in 1% of your portfolio into a 2.75% drop consistently and you're down 2.75%, then you're, you're going to be fine you'll be able to get into a break even well, usually the, the longest um, it's about like on average like 14 I think it was 14 or 15 days um, is the longest holding point you'll be at in a losing position for the Martingale strategy for Bitcoin but another great safe way of doing it in my opinion if you're not doing enough percentage values is just to do it off of macro levels of support dollar cost average and on those um, and you use the visible range volume profile like this to look for significant levels where we consolidate to find out what there is, the, where those locations are. Um, but the, let me just go back to the, I mean, really this is looking more bearish. Um, if we go to the, zoom in on Bitcoin here. In my, in my opinion, the floor for Bitcoin is this white line right here. Uh, so if you were to dollar cost average on a, on a position, the best time to do it's around here for a long, long term position. Like I'm saying, like four year hold, um, around 20. Right now, where the current price is, it's 19,000, but this updates every day. And this is the legacy trend line from. 2017. So, yeah, I've got a whole course on uh, Martingale trading. But yeah, if you're in a losing long, long-term position trade for something like Bitcoin, you want to wait until like macro levels of resistance are broken before dollar cost averaging. So you're knowing that you're entering into a trade that uh, is starting to go towards your break-even state. You don't want a dollar cost average into um, 
what you you know levels like this for example you can dollar cost average and every single time a retest the resistance will drop and further and further putting yourself more and more in the hole um, with dollar cost averaging the more you add to your position the harder it is to adjust your average it costs more and more money to adjust your average so you have to be really smart with your initial entries so you want to do it usually typically during um, like the martingale strategy can be combined with breakout trading so if you're like a lot of beginners will turn to break um, the martingale strategy instead of using a soft loss because like if you break this resistance and you enter the trade and it goes against you for some reason you could dollar cost average until you're at break even again um, or at least capturing a 0.8% gain and then wait for the next trade and then you dollar cost average after if you lose that one too um, was not something I'd recommend practicing unless you got a full grip of how to manage your risk with a trade strategy like that because it technically has a 100% win rate because you're supposed to be only using low leverage one to two x maximum um yeah i lost my train of thought there but <laughs> yeah basically just super be careful with martin gale because it has 100 percent win rate until it doesn't because typically if you lose a trade with a martin gale strategy you're losing your entire account um what but what is the best entry from two point from all from all time high 2.75 drops yeah the hourly was looking bearish for a second there so I'm not surprised that's dropping a little bit The, uh, yeah, when we were looking at Cardano this morning during the call, I kind of wanted us to have a drop like this for before breaking this local resistance because this local resistance break is the reason why we got got in. Um, and we got above the point of control too. But this could provide us a double bottom. We just got to have this honored as support. This honor test support, then we can have a double bottom structure. We can break this neckline here, and we'll be off to the races. But as a complete beginner, that doesn't take a lot of. Of this training stuff and where the best place to start and practice trades where's the best place to start practicing trades um, well as a complete beginner what I'd recommend doing and we can leave this um, is going to like pick an asset that you want to ma master because every asset has their own kind of unique behavior. They, some may correlate strongly with others, but percentage value wise, everything is kind of unique. So I would recommend picking like either one to five assets maximum as your like your watch list. And then going into for learn formations and ranges. So we go first, you want to learn formations because formations will show you the exhaustion behavior of and the momentum behavior of the asset. So I would recommend picking like a double top or a double bottom, inverse head and shoulders, and head and shoulders formation first. Those four uh, uh, formations. And then going to the very beginning of the asset time. So I'm going to go one sec here. Oh, this is looking good for long soon. Um, so let's go to Bitcoin, I guess, on this chart. I'll just zoom out. You go to the daily or whatever. And then go to replay mode and then just 
start at the very beginning of the asset. Don't look at the price. And then just trade the same formations over and over and over again. Work on the same, you know, win rate. Like work on improving your win rate. And over here, you can have a buy and sell system here. You can buy and then let it play kind of thing. And you know what I mean? You just practice buying and selling through this paper trading, basically. Um, but yeah, go through the entire history of an asset, pick a few formations, master those formations, move on to the next one, and then look into uh, valley, like visible range volume profile to help you master ranges to identify ranges and where price action will typically consolidate or near these peak areas, these uh, areas of interest, and then learn how to trade within ranges. But formations are important to understand the market behavior. Ranges are great for understanding demand zones, supply zones, where people tend to buy and sell consistently. Um, but yeah. That's what I recommend at the start. And then start with like maybe $10 when you're starting with real money. And then the real money, what you, after you mastered the technical analysis part, which technically you never master, there's always something to learn. Um, but there's only a certain amount of things that you absolutely have to learn, but there's only so, there's like a finite amount of things you can learn. Um, but yeah. After you learn the technical analysis, using real money, you got to start mastering your emotions because your emotions make you do stupid shit <laughs> all the time. You'll enter into FOMO. You'll enter into FUD. Um, you'll adjust your stop losses when you shouldn't. You can adjust your stop loss, but you have to have a valid reason or change the strategy in order to adjust your stop loss. Um, you don't want to just enter in on a, a candle like a green candle or a red candle. You want to wait, you want to enter in on that green candle or that red candle if a certain thing has happened because of it, like um, breaking downtrend resistance. If you want to enter a breakout on this, you can. Um, you can enter a short off. Of, technically, you could enter a short off. this loss of momentum here. But you'd be reacting to support level. I'm going to take the sweater off soon. It's getting hot in here. No problem, man. Um, I hope that helps. So if, yeah, if you have any more questions, just let me know. But uh, risk management is probably one of the most important. It's one of the most important things you can learn about trading. Knowing how much funds to allocate based on the loss. Knowing how many funds to allocate based on the gain. Um, knowing where to put your stop loss location can sometimes be tricky for some people. If you're a beginner with the stop loss location, then I recommend using the average true range. Um, but the only downside with the average true range is sometimes it hasn't adapted yet to the current price action. For example, if you were going to enter a short off this double top, it didn't update until price action got down here. So you wouldn't know where to put your stop loss location if you're a beginner. But typically, it's the most recent swing high for shorts, the most recent swing low for longs. Um, longer term strategy trades, like if you're approaching like daily downtrend resistance like this, you want to put your stop loss below the confirmation of that daily support bounce. Right now we're doing a short term trade with this um, support acting as our protection for the stop loss. But in a longer term trade, because we could easily break this resistance and come back down, you'd want to put it at least below this, um, the confirmation bounce. And Another great thing to know, entering longs from uptrending support in formations are way safer than entering shorts with uptrending resistance because as price action develops, like if I put my stop loss, let's say I enter it around here and I put my stop loss around here, every candle that passes, you're getting more and more protected with your stop loss location. And when you have a re, like a retest and a bounce, then you can move your stop loss to the retest. Or you can trail the average true range, whatever you want to do. There are lots of different ways of managing your stop loss, but getting in on those uptrending formations for longs, they usually have 
um, the safest way to put your stop loss location. And um, because of that, it actually ends up being the, one of the reasons why we lose um, support rather than resistance when it's uptrending. Like the support level technically is more like statistically likely to break than this resistance first. Like this will probably break first before this. But if we uptrend above a critical level of support, like here, or resistance, sorry, and this flips that support, then we can have a break to the upside. But it's like a 45% chance that we break resistance that's uptrending. Uh, no problem, man. Um, two hours and 20 minutes in. Got local support here. We almost hit that double top target. This one here. We came back up to revisit this point of control and have it act as resistance before going down. I don't mind it when it, it goes against me this much, but uh, yeah, so long as you don't wick in and then pump, I'll be fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm banking on this local support to be honored and have enough momentum to break this down to any resistance. So if anyone who's late, that would be the, the entry. Swing trading, you'll have s trades that sometimes go against you for like three days before they go up. Um. Link double top next. Uh, let's take a look at link. Yeah, yeah, link. Like I really wanted to break this resistance so it can enter along, but it didn't, it failed. And this is the neckline right here for link. If we break this neckline resistance, then yeah, definitely want to enter a short. And technically, when we lost this momentum here, you could enter the short early. It's right here. And you can use downtrending momentum to dictate your exit. But this would have been the entry right here. We got neckline. If we break that neckline resistance, then the probably bring us right, yeah, right to that point of control right here. So just so the beginners that might be watching, this is an area of interest here. This is a location where we tend to likely have consolidation, and this is a valley. And when price action closes within the valley, we have quick moves like little burst moves. Yeah. So yeah, if we break this neckline, then this is the consolidation zone that I'll be looking at. Here we could have reversal formation that could tell us to get out early too. Okay. 
Cardano is below this consolidation zone now. Good ping pong between it. Oh yeah, I'll jump in on the link trade if it happens. Super common for consolidation to happen above resistance like this, though. Like the inverse, and like these are called the confirmation formations. These formations, when they break, they kind of dictate whether they're going to actually fulfill their target or drop down to uh, as a fake out kind of thing. You can call it a fake out, but in my opinion, when you got this much time to react to the formation, right? Yes. You can make money off of uh, the fake outs too. Get a blister waking it. In trades like this, is where we are. There are several levels of resistance by the time it gets to the last point of resistance. Do the previous ones affect the likelihood that it will pass through the final? Uh, if I read that right. So, yeah, we, uh, I think I gotta reread that. <laughs> Where we have several levels of resistance by the, by the time it gets to the last point of resistance, do the previous ones affect the likelihood that will pass through the final? Um, let me try to translate that. The, um, so like local levels of support and resistance, when we break past them, they, they usually tend to form momentum. Uh, for example, when we came and lost this point of control right here, when we came up and revisited it, we created evolving momentum. So we have this momentum right here. We also have this evolving momentum right here. Um, when we break past these levels of resistance and the act of support, they tend to um, cause strong continuations. When we get trapped between a local level of support and resistance like this, they tend to have formations that are built that will dictate whether these um, support and resistance levels will find out which one's stronger by the formations that's made. If we build a continuation pattern and we break it to the upside, then we know that the support was stronger and that they had stronger buy, uh, buy walls at the support level and weaker sell walls at the resistance uh, the resistance level. Um, I hope that helps with your question. But uh, if the previous ones weaken the momentum. Um, no, they can they can strengthen it, the momentum. Uh, but yeah, if you enter a short here when you have this new evolving momentum from this little swing high here, then you'd have this evolving momentum to help dictate whether you should close 50% of your trade or not. And then you'd have this macro momentum here um, dictate when you should close your full trade or not. Yeah, exactly, it strengthens momentum. If we break this, then we're more likely to have that double bottom play out. Here is also, well, it depends on how where it breaks out, but it could be a good location to enter in late too, or long.
Break that, please. All right, we got above this local resistance. Oh, we just got shot down a flash. Have you guys ever been in a part of a flash crash before? You ever trade within a flash crash? They're pretty intense to see live. So they, um, sometimes you'll see a candle um, basically come down so fast that it just, it's almost as if it just <laughs> appears out of thin air. Um, they're not that common anymore, but back when Bitcoin was worth $10,000 or less, you'd see those candles just magically appear out of thin air just from one market sell order. Because all it, like one person back in the day could influence, like I could push the mar the price of Bitcoin up like 25 to 50 cents. So like, I know it doesn't sound like much, but it was actually a pretty big deal, especially when you were a rebate trader. I, I used to do market rebate trading, not market, re uh, limit rebate trading on Bybit, and you can make money off of 50 cent moves. Make profit off your own trade. Like you could move the market to a location from your own entry to capitalize off the profits from the, the market rebates because you get paid to enter the trades 0.025% per entry per the, from the volume. So if you put in like $10,000, a 10x leverage that acts as $100,000, you're making 250 bucks just to get in and out of a 50 cent move in the market. That was like eight months ago. Oh, Gala, Michael, thank you. Gala, looking good. Just making sure this trend line's perfect. We're good on the 15 minute. First full body above this downtrending resistance. Oh, this is called wick structure resistance and sometimes it causes cell pressure for if they're if the gap is pretty far away and you have wick pressure uh, wick cell pressure resistance then you could use them as confluence to know that there's going to be a confirmation bounce so we hit it come back down have this act as support and then come up and break past it um, We had an active support on the five minute already. We can dissect the price action. For the local price action, you'd want to be above this point of control though. Right here. It's looking close, man. Uh, we're gonna get a trade coming through soon with Gala. See how it reacts to this. Either way, if it if it takes longer to break out, you're getting a better and better risk to reward ratio. So Take a peek at Cardano. What's Bitcoin doing? Probably get more volume on Bitcoin. Nope. Oh, if we get up here, just got to get up here for Bitcoin. We'll be carried hard if Bitcoin gets up there. Cartan's looking like it's losing that momentum. I 
I did not enter yet because I got busy, so I think a late entry. Yeah, this downturning level of resistance break is going to be a good late entry. But uh, as a short term um, trader, uh, if you're doing scalp trading, you'd be out here. No questions asked. You'd just be, you'd enter in around here whenever we break this resistance. And you'd be out here. Undercut it with a limit order. Back in my high leverage days, 0.7% you know, loss. You can use like 50x leverage with that move. What books do you recommend for beginners? So I didn't really read that many trading books if you're talking about trading. Um, but there's a lot of mindset books I could recommend to you. Um, Atomic Habits. I'll just pull them out. Yeah, I got Think and Grow Rich I'd recommend. I'm sure you've been recommended that a million times online though. Um, how to Talk to Anyone, that's more of a personal thing. Um, because I, I'm kind of an introvert and I'm trying to help people earn an income and sometimes I'm on a call with 100 plus people. So how to talk to anyone. I kind of got that one for myself. Uh, read people like a book, same kind of thing. Um, the coaching habit, that's more of a personal thing too. The Silva mind control method, I'd recommend that to everybody. Uh, that's a game changer. And the four hour work week, that'll make you want to quit your job. <laughs> and the at Atomic Habits is a great one too. So those are some of books I'd recommend. I got yeah, I got tons of books though. But trading wise, learning from books is difficult. Um, some because most of the books that are written these days are very like like before crypto was made. So I would prefer if you're going to learn about. Trading, I guess there's a few good trading books you can pick up. It's like here. I personally haven't read any trading books, folks on mindset, but. Are you part of the community, Elizabeth? I don't recognize your name. So I can give you, I can give you a message on Discord later of a bunch of books. What about Gala? Um, Gala still, yes, I haven't broke past this yet. And I got hesitant from the wick resistance. I'm glad I did because we got pushed down. But we're forced into a short or a long soon with Gala. It's got very little time left. Minute. I knew you from Fanova. Oh, cool. Max Mayer's group. Yeah. Yeah, Fanova's cool. Yeah, David's part of Investor Share 2 as a coach. The only downside with the community is really quiet. They need a spark engagement somehow. Creeping above this. Got some buy shadow wicks here, so we're good sign. Getting above that local resistance which adds another field of protection to our stop loss. So whenever we get new levels of resistance flipping as support, adds another additional level of protection to your stop loss.
Doesn't mean we move it right below the support though. <laughs> we need some distance. So like technically you could move your, if you're had to go or something like that. Um, sometimes there are situations where you can move your stop loss below the most recent local support, like moving it from here to here when we capture a new one. But the gap between this support level and this support level is way too thin. Uh, if you had a, a lot more distance away, like maybe if we got a price action above this swing high here and had that act as support, then we definitely can move our stop loss closer towards our break even. Does David have his own community too? I don't believe so, no. Um, he's a busy dude. With Finova, he's got a lot of calls he does with them. He does a lot of calls with Investor Share. Um, he travels a lot. And that's typically, that's the reason why he chooses swing trades because it fits his lifestyle. So he can enter in a trade and not worry about it for a few days. Um, yeah, that's why he, he does those longer term trades that you'd see in his, in his calls. We got strong resistance from that. If this candle closes below here, we have a new swing high. But a better, if we break this downturn resistance close to this uptrend level support, then we have a better location to actually enter additional funds into the trade. Yeah, the stop the break even point will be roughly around here. If we got a bounce here. What's Bitcoin doing? Why is there so much dropping? Yeah, Bitcoin might influence yeah, influence our trade. That's why I always put your stop loss in an invalidation point because the breakouts always are really strong. Well, that's the first loss since the challenge started. 0.51%, 5.10%. Bitcoin hit the VWAP. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Value very low. Got in. Well, guys, that, I guess that ends the call. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we got a law, our first loss on the challenge, 0.51% loss, 10x leverage, 5.10%. And the longer term traders that had the lead, I think there are some people that are long, think about doing it longer term. Um, yeah, their stop loss is down here. Okay. Um, yeah, moment of truth. Yeah, good call. Stopped out on KuCoin. Was stopped out. Perhaps we should look at this trade in a, as a multi-day. Yeah, yeah. If you have, I have a separate account open right now for a multi-day trade for Cardano. And it's how I'm going to treat the... Um, coffee trader trade but for my personal yeah I'm, I'm out with my personal for the uh, challenge closing yeah Dean um, I'm out and I can't legally tell you what to do but I'm out of my trade um, at least my personal trade the um, Copy trader trade, I'm, I'm setting it for a multi-day trade. So I have my stop loss down here. Um, but yeah. Got people stopped out for sure. If we get acceptance back up here, then it's definitely like a 
market maker douchebag move. Stop hunting people during the New York session, which is about to close in 30 minutes. What's Gala doing? Oh, Gala wicked out during that little brief moment. It saw where I put my stop loss location when I was preparing for the trade, so it went down to wick <laughs> people out who had this on their screen. Yeah, uh, let's see. Chain link is going up after its pump. And these kind of liquidity grabs are common. I'm going to leave this on my screen for the multi-day trade I'm in. Bummer. Yeah, that'll be another opportunity. Yeah, there's thousands of opportunities. It's the beauty of trading. What a strong bounce. What's the size of that wick? We got 0.4% wick. Yeah, Gal's wick was pretty intense. Came down, got out of the formation too for a moment, closed back in it. Don't want this to be seen as revenge trading or over trading, but I might uh, still trade today in, in this break here. Look at that. Oof. Uh, yeah, so a candlestick like this is typically bullish, but um, it can also be bearish if you're not. If you want something like this to close above resistance. Um, the downside with these is that this shows you that in the order books that there were limit buy orders that were filled, um, and those same limit orders are no longer there anymore because they filled the price back up, right? They pumped the price back up. So it'd be easier for price action to actually drop against uh, this uh, uh, Cardano now if we lose this support level. Definitely not a lost trade, lost time, yeah. Definitely lost time. Is this uh for Bitcoin doing bounce Ethereum ranging? Fifteen minute time frame. Twenty 
or six minutes on the hourly. Yeah, we haven't had an hourly candle close below this, so we gotta have the hourly candle close back above it to maintain that support level. But the lower time frames can give us a lot of information of whether or not it access resistance. Uh, we have price action close below here in the lower time frames. It comes back up and get a rejection before the hourly candle closes. Um, you can potentially get in on a confirmation rejection from that. But you want to do that when there's a trend line that doesn't have full buys below it. We had full buys below it here. So these can be flipped to local resistance. If we lose the support, I'm out. Are you waiting for our candle confirmation area? Yeah, we still haven't, we, yeah, we lost it technically, but we haven't had a candle confirmation close yet. If you entered it on the short, then good job, guys. Right here. All right, we got a five minute close below it. Ten minutes left on that. Gala still chilling. Link still chilling. So 24 minutes left on the 30 minute and the hourly, I believe. Yeah. And it's the multi-day trade that I really care about. That's the one that just want to break this local resistance so I can start tracking the uptrending momentum and I could program my trend line stop loss to uh, manage the trade for me. Um, with my copy trader, the one of the developers that, well, Otto, he's a developer of Investor Share and he helps me a lot with uh, building programs that automate my trades and and tools for investor share and stuff like that. And he basically made it so that I can program any trend line on trading view so that when a full body candle closes below it or above it, it'll trigger my stop loss that way. So I can just sleep and have an uptrending stop loss management tool basically be managed in the moment that it crosses below it with a full body candle closed and then it will close the trade on any time frame that I want. So that's what I'm waiting for right now is a new, like a swing low and a bounce. And that won't happen until we get price action above this. And at that point, I can start using this momentum to manage the trade. But right now, I only can use this one here, the support of the macro formation. With this volume, I don't want to keep um, step away from it. Pro please, yeah, not this one. <laughs> this one, uh, this one went against me.
tons of bullish confluence at the time, but then just, yeah, had to do a quick reset. Bitcoin is fighting that VWAP. Got to reprogram mine. Stop lost line saying, yeah, it's cool. I love it. Love to try to figure out a way to program it so anyone can use it. So you can enter your trades and use a trend line for your stop loss management. But we do have the, um, why is yours, why is yours lower? Okay, so like my stop loss for the challenge, my personal account got hit. Like I already got stopped out. Um, but I have a multi-day trade also set up right here for my stop loss. And I, uh, I want to break this recent high here for the, uh, so I can start managing the uh, risk better. So in terms of the challenge, I'm already out. Another view. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Got gotcha, you, man. Almost back up there. Got to break this downtrend resistance. See what happens first, though. We gotta break this downtrend resistance while we're inside the structure. Or else we'll just have evolving momentum and it'll just drop down faster. Our early time frame, we're almost got acceptance back in it. We just gotta pump a little further up. Gotta turn off the heater, guys. ATM still in? Yes, the uh, the copy trader is still in the trade. So I was gonna do a multi-day trade with the copy trader. The downside is the risk is pretty high. Zero point nine four percent loss. So I gotta get, yeah, gotta get it back above here so we can uh, start using a trend line to manage the stop loss. Two minutes, we might break out. 17 minutes on this hourly. And the 30 minutes, also 17 minutes left. Link. That'd be exciting if we get link above here. Gala still chilling. Max getting closer to that support level.
If I entered my account tied to copy trader, the future stop loss take profit. Uh, so you could cause confusion for the bot. I'm just trying to think in my head here how that's going to... So the, the copy trader, how it's coded, it's going to read your balance. Um, the moment I enter into a trade and the moment I exit out of the trade. So it should read your balance with a new total and close the full amount. Yeah, so it should work with your stop loss and your take profit no matter what you enter into it. But just be careful doing that kind of stuff. Um, I normally recommend having a sub account for copy traders and other bots in general too. But yeah, to answer your question, it should take control of your existing trade too if you're compounding into an existing trade. Like if you, if you entered more into your Condado trade, it should. Will we be doing another challenge trade today? I don't think so. Um, just waiting for a few things in the market. We could, we could if we if certain things happen faster. Like we could enter along if we break this resistance here for this inverse head and shoulders for a link like this is looking like a great trade opportunity um, so I'll do something like that it's also a high risk trade in terms of like your stop loss location but it's a 1 to 3 risk reward ratio Kyle, I don't see it and stop loss in BitGet is that expected. Yes, it's 100% expected. So with our system, we set it up so that we our stop losses cannot be seen. Um, oh, this is not good. Let me see. 14 minutes. So yeah, if you use, typically when you use stop losses, it will be executed as a limit order or it's seen in the order books. So... Yeah, we have our set so it's market order exits. So it won't it will just look at the price action I've got set up and it will close the trade um, with a market order. I might have to close this trade actually. This multi day one, just pick a better entry. We get an hourly candle close below the support level, then we'll we'll suffer for it. We got 13 minutes left though. Yeah, market makers know where they are. They have a reading system. Like there's tons of order book reading systems that will show you where stop losses are. Uh, yeah, we're in a trade. Uh, EJSP. We're actually in a losing trade right now. The first thing, losing trade since we've started the challenge. Um, we're looking at Cardano, but we're also looking at opportunities. It's got to go back to the 30 minute, leave it at 30 minute for now. Um, we're looking at opportunities right now as well for Link. If we get above this resistance here, um, Gala, if we break this down, trending resistance. Matic, we lose the support. Yeah, challenge trade stopped out.
just seeing how this 30 minute candle reacts because when the 30 minute candle closes in 11 minutes so does the hourly um, so I'm hoping that we get price action back above the support trend line here And the daily, for those who are just jumping in. Oh, Raymond, what's up, man? I miss your Scottish accent. It's been a while since I heard you. Um, but yeah, we're looking at this downtrain level resistance right here in the daily time frame, and we're using short time frames to dictate our entry for the downtrain resistance break. Um, and going back into lower time frames. This is the formation that's kind of like the confirmation formation for the breakout. But unfortunately, it's kind of a bearish formation structure. But when you're longing off uptrending support, you have a better protected stop loss. So we wanted to enter in the long when we got above a strong level of support, I mean resistance, but then it went against us after Bitcoin went down. We lost this uptrending momentum. Could have technically entered a short during the loss of momentum. But uh, because of our stop loss location, we were banking on the support to be honored. And when we break this down to any lower resistance, we would have a double bottom structure. But we got stopped out for the lower time frame trade that was for the challenge. And we're still in, I'm still in um, a multi day trade that I put in for the coffee trader. Just need to create, get a good bounce here, break this downturn resistance so I can start managing my stop loss for better location. I don't have to stare at the screen. If I'm staring at the screen, I might as well do it with you guys, right? So um, I don't mind being on the live longer. The four hour candle closes in 11 minutes as well. That's good to know. Thanks, man. Yeah, we're just gonna get a four hour, any of these, or the hourly, yeah, all that stuff. It's gotta close above that support. We don't want a four hour confirmation of a break. What's a six hour look like? Okay, it's got. Okay. That's right. Get up there. Pump, pump, pump. Probably check on the community, make sure everything's good there. Um, let's see. I'm going to start updating the chart here. So first loss. It's Cardano. Hmm. 
Oops. Six minutes. Anything else you guys want to go over? Um, Gala is still chilling. Link is still chilling. Six minutes left. Struggling to break through this, but it might do it. Five minutes. Start playing the song of the final countdown in the background for you guys. You can do it, come on, four minutes. Gotta get above that local resistance. You can do it. You guys are super quiet. You got, I'm just a dude sitting in a chair looking at the screen right now. Unless there's someone talking in the chat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, three minutes left in that close. Just listening. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. One thing I'm excited for with Link is if we get this break to the upside here and we actually break this, I don't think we will anytime soon at this point, but if we break this downtrend level resistance on the daily time frame, then uh, we can expect a strong rally in the decentralized space. And typically you can use Link as an indicator of when the altcoin season will begin. When we so when we break this downturn resistance, you can yeah expect a around that time for an altcoin rally. Link is dependent on a lot in the decentralized space. But you can use a lot of other factors too, like Bitcoin dominance. Um, when I was expecting a big um, when Bitcoin got caught. In this range way up here, let me go back daily. 
when Bitcoin gets cut, well, it didn't really accept the range. We kind of got in it and then we dropped down. But this area here, if we consolidate within this range, um, typically we like the last time we consolidated here was about 30 days. I think it was about 30 days. Um, so yeah, so we might have like a 30 day old coin cycle if we get back above that range and we consolidate within it. And go over the Wyckoff method here. I'm going to pull up that chart first. And Cardano's on the higher time frames, it's getting acceptance back in here. What does the four hour look like when it closes? Okay. Okay, it's closing in four seconds. Most of all altcoin chains use link for price feeds. Exactly, yeah. yeah. All right, so we got the hourly candle close. And we had a 15 minute candle close back in here. Hour candle close back up in there. Four hour. So, yeah, this is the kind of the last straw for our Cardano in terms of the support. The price behavior at the support level is pretty wacky. gap there gala hey gallo is still chilling it's waiting on that entry for gala still we want to get gala above this point of control before entering as it can act as strong resistance here. You can see that it's consistently acting as support and resistance throughout this whole range here. Doesn't have much room to move though. So either we're getting a really strong short or a short term long. Is that a hammer in Cardano? Where? This here? This is a hammer, yeah. If this closed like this, this would be a dragonfly. They usually tend to be single candle. The, the reason why the they're known as bullish reversals is typically in the, the larger time frames because in the lower time frame this may look like you know a hammer candle. I mean sorry in the higher time frame this may look like a, a hammer candle but in the lower time frame this looks like a v-shaped recovery or an inverse head and shoulders um, so like that's one thing it, 
you have the same behavior as inverse head and shoulders, technically with a hammer candle. If you had like a daily candle like this, for example, and you dissect it in the lower time frames, that's what you'd see. Can you check Tron? Yeah, we can check Tron. Um, let's take a peek. Callus doing his thing still anyway, so um, TRX. Yeah, it's still going up. See, we had a short bias with Tron at the start of the day because we were at the top of this range and we started creating the double top structure and we are revisiting the horizontal resistance for this potential double top here. So right after losing momentum like this, it's common for a double top to be made, so let's see how it goes, but right now yeah, it's combating that local resistance and it's trying to get back above it. This is technically a higher high right here, even without the candle being closed above it. Higher wick. See you, man. Have a great night. You're out too. See you, bud. Leaving the copper trader work for me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, I'll keep an eye on the charts for you. <laughs> See you guys. Um, I think I should probably end the call too. There's not really much going on. There's so much um news event like you know news events in terms of like. Uh, USD impacting stuff going on here. So the volume could be low from, from that. This is one I have to still research, look into Empire State Manufacturing Index. For there to be a 10x indifference with their forecast, it's pretty intense. Tomorrow, we could probably still do our call tomorrow. There's a, a CPI coming up for Canada. Core retail, what time is that? 8.30. So yeah, by the time we start, we'll be fine. No problem, Mark. Have an awesome day. Um, just gonna keep my eyeballs on Gala. It's a really good trade setup. Getting ready here. Long or short, either way, it's a good opportunity. All right, guys. Yeah, I'm going to head out. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me in the Discord, and I'll do my best to help you out. Um, you had to shoot me a, a message if you have any questions about anything that you might be struggling with. Uh, this trade, basically, I'm going to be... This is a long-term trade here, where my stop loss is at uh, 0 0.3677. My goal is to wait for price action to get above this swing high here. And then that will create this as the next swing low where I can start moving my stop loss to be below this instead. Um, if we start creating new swing lows along the way up, I can start moving my stop loss along those swing lows there and manage my, um, my risk that way. 
ultimately i would love to have cardano break above this but it's not up to us <laughs> if we break above this then it would be the start of that multi-day trade technically um, this is just trying to get an earlier entry off of it no problem guys great session um win or lose i had fun and the uh it was the first loss for the the uh hundred dollar to 50k challenge but still in the way we're still in the trade for the copy trader and that's going to be the multi-day trade that i'm going to manage here for you guys um all right guys you have an awesome day i appreciate you jumping on and watching honestly it's pretty cool that you guys are able to watch me do all this see you guys talk to you soon